Well, history must record uh, Trump's plan for a nationwide Kent State massacre. And I realize that sounds hyperbolic. You know, what, a national massacre? Trump, what? What are you talking about? Well, there are two lines, two, two portions of Jack Smith's indictment of Donald Trump that when I read them, actu it just, just made my blood run cold. I mean, it just horrified me. And what they reminded me of was Kent State. Now, first of all, just to, to you know, revisit Kent State, you'll recall on May 1st, 1970, California Governor Ronald Reagan said that the anti-Vietnam War protesters, and I was among them at the time, were brats, freaks, and cowardly fascists. And then, as the New York Times reported at the time, he said, if it takes a bloodbath, let's get it over with. No more appeasement. Well, four days later, on May 5th, 1970, he got his bloodbath. Kent State University, 28 National Guard soldiers opened fire with live ammunition on an estimated 3,000 student protesters. Uh, over a mere 13 seconds, nearly 70 shots were fired. Jeffrey Miller, Allison Krauss, William Schroeder, and Sandra Scheuer were killed, and nine others were wounded. One of the dead, uh, Schroeder, William Schroeder, was shot in the back, as were several of those who were wounded. And this then led to the uh, explosion of membership at the, with the Weather Underground, which had been started a year earlier, but after Kent State really started taking off. In other words, a, a resistance willing to use violence in response to violence, to deadly violence. So what does that have to do with today? Well, imagine if the plan that Trump, Eastman, Giuliani, Powell, Chesborough, and Clark had laid out had succeeded if the mob had actually seized and then hanged Mike Pence, if Chuck Grassley had then become the president pro tem of the Senate and had been the guy who would open the votes and certify the election, if Chuck Grassley had accepted the fake electors instead of the real electors, as it appears he was prepared to do, if the Senate had then, or if, the, if Congress had then you know, voted and, and made Donald Trump president, essentially. What would happen? I think you and I both know what would happen was that people would pour out into the streets in every city in America. But keep in mind, Donald Trump was still president. In the indictment, a senior advisor, I'm guessing this is Mark Meadows, tells John Eastman, co-conspirator number two, that pulling such a stunt would mean, quote, you're going to cause riots in the streets. Now, how did Eastman respond to that? He said, Co he said, there have previously been points in the nation's history where violence is necessary to protect the republic. In other words, he was perfectly willing to turn guns on protesters. The right-wing militia movement has, you know, turned to Jefferson's old saying, you know, the tree of liberty must be watered from time to time with the blood of patriots into a slogan that's on their t-shirts. There was another conversation where essentially the same thing was said. Uh, this, I'm, I'm reading from the, from the indictment here, quote, the deputy White House counsel reiterated to co-conspirator four that there had not been outcome determinative fraud. This is Jeffrey Clark that there had not been outcome determinative fraud in the election and that if the defendant rate remained in office nonetheless, there would be riots in every major city in the United States. Jeffrey Clark responded, well, that's why there's an Insurrection Act. What does the Insurrection Act provide for? Well, it was passed in 1792 during the George Washington administration. The last time it was updated was 1871. And the Insurrection Act gives the president the power to basically order the entire U.S. military into the streets to use live ammunition against American civilians to restore peace and order. Kent State. And this would be not just at a college in Ohio. This would be in every major city in America. It would have been the end of America as we know it. And Donald Trump knew it. Rudy Giuliani knew it. John Eastman and Jeffrey Clark, they all knew it. Chuck Grassley knew it. 
when Ted Cruz took the floor of the Senate and called for a 10-day pause in the counting to reevaluate the, the fake ballots. He was doing what John Eastman was calling for. He was doing, I mean, these, these guys, they were calling these Republican senators that day. And he knew it would mean the end of the republic. Ted Cruz was just fine with that. Trump had a, an executive order ready to go, basically militarizing the country. Mike Flynn, who had been convicted of lying to the FBI about Russia's role in Trump's campaign in 20, 2016, was pardoned by Trump late in November of 2020 after he lost the election. Flynn immediately took the position that Trump should declare uh, nat mar martial law. He retweeted a call, quote, to immediately declare a limited form of martial law and temporarily suspend the Constitution. Now, you, you think that people wouldn't turn out in the streets if the president suspended the Constitution? You think that Donald Trump as president wouldn't have used his military against us? Hell, he did it in Lafayette Square. He brought the military out to attack peaceful protesters in Lafayette Square, right across the street from the, from the White House. Helicopters, you know, uh, uh, hitting the, 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 the protesters with their downdraft. Tear gas. Weapons, arm, you know, automatic weapons pointing at people. Flynn tweeted or retweeted, quote, we have well-funded, armed, and trained Marxists in Antifa and BLM strategically positioned in major cities, acting openly with violence to silence opposition to their anti-American agenda. This is why he said we needed martial law, the army in the streets. They would have stolen the votes from 81 million Americans who voted for Joe Biden, thrown them away, and those 81 million people would be pissed off. And Trump was ready for it. Former Defense Secretary Jim Mattis was so horrified by what he was seeing. I mean, this was specifically about the Lafayette Square incident. He wrote, and I quote, when I joined the military some 50 years ago, I swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution. Never did I dream that troops taking that same oath would be ordered under any circumstance to violate the constitutional rights of their fellow citizens, much less to provide a bizarre photo op for the elected commander in chief with military leadership standing, aside, standing alongside. Now that was General Mark Milley who was standing there with Donald Trump and he later apologized for that and he appears to be the guy, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Mark Milley, who stopped Trump from declaring martial law here in the United States. I mean, we don't know for sure. We still don't know, but it appears that that's the case. If Mike Pence had been hanged, and apparently Chuck Grassley expected that. I, you know, I, I said if Chuck Grassley had become the president pro tem, this is what Chuck Grassley said on January 5th, the day before the mob built the gallows and tried to hang Mike Pence. He said, quote, well, first of all, I will be, if the vice president isn't there and we don't expect him to be there, I will be presiding over the Senate. Let that sink in. And then when he was challenged about that by a reporter who said, what? He said, first of all, you know, it's a legal process under the law and under the Constitution for these folks to do what they're doing, these folks being the fake electors. He said it was done by the Democrats in 2004, and I think one other time. People are finding, that are finding fault with Republicans doing it shouldn't do it when it's done by Democrats. Right. And then there's Ron Johnson. As the indictment says, quote, on the morning of January 6th, an agent of the defendant contacted a United States Senator, Ron Johnson, to ask him to hand deliver documents to the vice president. Those documents, of course, were the fake electors. The agent then facilitated the receipt by the senator's staff of the fraudulent certificates signed by the defendant's fraudulent electors in Michigan and Wisconsin, which were believed not to have been delivered to the vice president or archivist by mail. In addition, eight Republican senators voted to sustain objections to the actual electors and to accept the fake electors. They were Tommy Tuberville, Rick Scott, Roger Marshall, John Kennedy, Cindy Hyde-Smith, Josh Hawley, Ted Cruz, and Cynthia Loomis. Around two o'clock in the afternoon, in the middle of the riot, Trump called Senator Mike Lee, thinking that he had Tommy Tuberville. 
and for 10 minutes tried to talk him into objecting to the actual electors. Mike Lee, to his credit, did not vote that way, along with those other eight that I just named. Then Rudy Giuliani called Lee. Now, the, the, his conversation with the president got interrupted because the, the protesters, the, the mob, the rioters, had broken into the Senate chambers, and they had to evacuate them. So when, when uh, Giuliani called Mike Lee, thinking it was Tuberville, it went to voicemail. And he said, I, you know, I want to discuss with you how we're trying to rush this hearing, and I need you, our Republican friends, to try to just slow it down.